Hey everyone, and welcome to Conversations for Peace, Day 5. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and we're going to dive right in today, picking up where we left off from yesterday, talking about what is essential for creating more energy of peace. One of the things that we've been discussing is how important it is to be fully committed to this process. Why is that? Well, the truth is, is that peace is an energy that requires a consistency. There's no such thing as being a little bit peaceful. You're either at peace or frankly, you're at war. And that war, of course, is within you. Just as peace is within you when you achieve it. But the question is, how do we achieve peace when it seems like it's an actual impossibility in the world that we live in? It's actually a very good question. <laughs> and I think it's one that really calls to us to explore. Because the truth is, if peace were an impossibility, we wouldn't be striving for it. Our heart would not yearn for it. And it wouldn't be something that we know we must attain. So let's talk for a moment about how essential that commitment is and why. I spoke yesterday about my own experience and how I put a photo of my former husband on the shelf up above my sink in my kitchen to use as a gauge as a gauge to where I was in my heart. And this system was one that allowed me to also like process through whatever I was processing at that time. It also helped me to develop this ability to observe what I was feeling, what I was thinking, what I wanted, so it helped me to clarify things as well. And so when I was thinking about what the message needed to be today about peace, what I realized is that the reason that commitment is so important is that there are many different aspects. You might even say modalities that we have to incorporate in order to create more energy of peace so that it then becomes the most powerful force in terms of how it is affecting your beliefs, your thoughts, and your actions, of course, and then all of your experiences. So commitment is really an act of self-love. It sort of partners with your determination that you're going to create a better life for yourself. So we could also say then that this commitment, particularly to peace, is an act of self-love. It's an act where you're putting your well-being as a priority in your life. This commitment is something that will be challenged. As I've said over and over, we are constantly being bombarded by information from the outside world that automatically has us judging. And judging in terms of somebody being wrong, somebody being right, pointing fingers of blame and shame or guilt and these energies are counterproductive to cultivating peace. So if you are in that act of judging, it is impossible for you to also be working towards cultivating peace. So what could we possibly do then that could help us to bypass this judgment that seems to be so ingrained within us. Well, this is where another one of our superpowers comes in. And that is the power of discernment. And you might be saying to yourself, well, what's the difference between judgment and discernment? 
it's enormous. Discernment is the act of discerning whether or not something is good for you. When you're judging and pointing fingers of blame and shame and guilting and all of that, you are separating yourself and seeing yourself as the judge of those around you. In that moment, because of the frequency of that energy, it creates automatic separation but it also is triggering within you the same energies. As you are pointing your finger out, those energies are coming forward within you. And so you may find, for instance, that in judgment you actually get angry, even more irritated. You need to blame and shame someone even greater. And so the difference between judgment and discernment is that there is none of that triggering of energy that separates, but it's rather what is best for me, what feels best, what's for my highest good, what is going to support my expansion, what um, is in support of me as a being of, of light, or perhaps even you as a human. What is in support of me? So discernment is when we take the information and we bring it in. Judgment is when we take the information and we push it out. Judgment is when those energies are triggered projecting greater and greater amounts of that energy out into the world. Discernment is an act of love. It's an act of self-love. Do I like this or do I like that? Does this feel good or does that feel good? And we go through this process of now taking actions that are created by discernment. And so what is happening is that you're, you're changing the whole trajectory of your life by allowing yourself to just see things differently, not from a place of who's to blame for this, but from a place of is this for my highest good. When we start to discern, and we are discerning energetically, and also discerning information. What we are also doing is strengthening our ability to hear, to feel, and to connect with our inner guidance. One thing that I can promise you is that when you are at war with yourself, when you have abdicated your power to cultivate peace, you have lost your ability to hear, to feel, and to connect with all of that guidance, part of your own inner guidance system. And when that happens, you get lost. And so, this world, of course, with all of this information coming at us all the time, makes it very easy for us to get lost. And in doing so, we lose so many parts of ourselves. The greatest part, of course, is our connection to our heart and our connection to others. And so, as I leave you today, I'd like to leave you with this one thought. And that is that you already have within you this ability to discern what is best for you. It's going to require that you actually sort of leave out the sound of 
the voices that are around you. Those who perhaps verbalize what is best for you or what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Those voices, some of them are active now. Some of them are active from your childhood. Some are voices from ancestors that you never even knew. And yet they get activated within you. And so we need to discern and cultivate our ability to discern so that we can connect with the energy of peace that's already within us, waiting for us to get quiet so that we can connect and align and hear and see and feel the communication that is coming through from that higher place of us, the place within us that knows what's best. And so this is a gift that peace has waiting for you. And so I'd like to remind you that there is um, a wonderful, wonderful peace pledge that I've written and I'm going to promise to you right now. In addition, I've also put together a guide, Seven Ways to Cultivate Peace, and it's um, on my website. And so I want to encourage you to go to heartshiftcoach.com and otherwise just close your eyes and take in this peace pledge that I am promising you. This is coming from my heart to yours. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility for who I am in the world and the energy that I am extending from my heart. I pledge to take compassionate action based on that heart that I am cultivating. And I take the peace pledge and I am passing it now from my heart into yours, offering you peace, offering you connection, and offering you my heart. And so, until tomorrow, you've got some food for thought. Bye-bye.